Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica. Let's get started with today's military video. Now, I know you guys clicked on the link for this video because one, you're either curious, two, you've been following me forever, or maybe you're interested in joining the Air Force. I've been in the Air Force for almost seven years, or has it been seven years? I think it's about to hit seven years, and I am so grateful, and I've learned a lot along the way, so I'm going to talk to you today about officer promotions and how we promote and make more money. Um, so first things first, more money is gonna be the quickest and easiest thing. You don't control your money or how much money you make. Congress does. So every fiscal year when um, we have closeout, which is September 30th for everyone in the Department of Defense, including Congress, um, when they're talking about passing the funds for military funds or discretionary funds, or Congress approving military budgeting, you wanna pay attention to that because that is key to you um, making more money and everything like that or getting paid. Again, if we ever had where they couldn't agree on an amount, um, the pay will be deferred and then you'll get your lump sum once the pay resumes. That has happened to me once. Um, but other than that, you shouldn't be too worried. The other thing you want to know about military pay, officer pay, is there are bonuses um, for officers, especially I don't know about the enlisted. I'm an officer. Um, for my Corps, Medical Service Corps, we unfortunately don't get bonuses. But usually for your doctors, um, for the specialists, um, where they really need to retain you, you will get bonuses, but you do incur a service commitment. Um, so just keep that in mind. Moving on to basically how we get promoted. It's, I'm trying to keep this video really short. It's kind of a complicated political way. Essentially, we have a form that you will have to, um, an officer promotion form, um, that's what I'll call it in layman's terms, because you don't need to really get down to the nitty gritty unless you're joining. But on your form, you'll complete it every year and you'll write what's bullets. Bullets are essentially like sentences on what you've done. For example, Captain Collins aced the inspection and she won an award, promote her now. That was the most basic bullet form I could ever make up um, but essentially that's how we get promoted so every year we have to submit it as long as you don't have anything derogatory on there you're um, winning awards for yourself and for your team if you're on a flight you should get promoted essentially up until you hit lieutenant colonel so let's dive right into that second lieutenant and first lieutenant you automatically promote every two years for example if Veronica Luke joined the Air Force April, August 1st, 2020, and I promote, and I was a second lieutenant. In August 1st, 2022, I would promote to first lieutenant automatically, unless something crazy happened. And then on August 1st of 2024, I would promote from first lieutenant to captain, again, unless something crazy happened. Then from captain to major, that's where you have to submit your performance record, also known as a PRF. And what you'll do is you'll basically have the requirements, which is like three narrative statements now. And I believe your wing commander can do a push statement and it'll get submitted to a board. The board convenes around a table and they pick everyone who wants to do HPERB, specialty things like I just did for my AFIT. Um, they'll pick also the major lieutenant colonel and colonel promotions and then from colonel to general is like you have to be referred to congress and congress has to be like yes we want to promote this person um, but essentially all of our names are public record every time we promote it's on like congress's list because all officers have what's called a scroll and in the budgets and everything and they keep documents on who promotes so if you ever want to be curious about pay you can always google I'll always Google military pay and look at the ranks and see how much you could potentially make. And then also um, your time in service, you, you do get small increments in pay. So for example, if you're like a seven year captain, you'll get an increase in your pay at the seventh year or something like that. Um, so again, the pay is kind of like set in standard. How you promote is kind of where it gets tricky. In my personal opinion, I do think promotions sometimes can be subjective, getting stratifications, meaning if you're strated, which is what an officer you want to have happen, it means, for example, Veronica is number four of my 25 captains. In order to do that, your local commander, local leadership needs to stratify you and say, I wanna give you a strat because you've earned it. That's where it can get a little political, a little subjective, 
definitely you don't want to bur burn bridges. I'm going to be honest, it is if you're liked. Um, another merit is like how many awards, promotions, what you're doing around the clinic, are you good at your job, or even not the clinic, whatever your job is, are you good at it? And so that's kind of how you earn a strat. Those strats go on the narrative statements that you'll submit annually. Then those annual narrative statements, once it's time, for example, me, I'll be submitting my performance record for major. I can go back and look at those and be like, look at all these things I've done. I deserve this. That was the old school way. They did just change and make major changes for promotion. There's no longer um, below the zone promotion. So BPZ, also known as below promotion zone, means for example, if I'm just a rock star captain right now and someone's like, you know what, I wanna submit you for major right now. Um, I will be, I could submit my record and be like, hey, I wanna go up for BPZ. Um, the problem with that was we had a lot of leaders who were not ready to lead. Um, I'm gonna be honest, you don't wanna be commanded by someone who's not ready or who's only been a captain for two years and all of a sudden they're commanding, you know, this whole huge area. Um, sometimes people aren't ready, sometimes people are ready, but regardless, they found that too many people, the Air Force found that too many people were not ready. So they got rid of BPZ. Now we have IPZ, which is in the promotion zone, meaning your date of rank, which there's a chart that will tell you all of this. If, you, if you're not in the military yet, you don't need to worry about it, but essentially your date of rank is whatever day you put on the rank you put on. So if I put on Captain August 1st, 2022, that is my new date of rank. And it keeps going until I stop promoting or whatever. Essentially, your date of rank will tell you when you're in the zone or APZ above the zone. In the zone, meaning, hey, this is your first look. We want to promote you to major. If you have no issues, no qualms, your leadership, your record looks good, we're going to promote you. Above the zone means you didn't get it the first time, but you may get it the second time or third time. Um, usually from second lieutenant through major is not difficult. It's when you start to hit lieutenant colonel and colonel where you probably will be above the zone. Um, sometimes there's like if Congress says, hey, we only have money to promote 10 colonels. Guess what? Only 10 colonels are going to get promoted and everyone else. If you're in that year group, you'll be above the zone if you want, if you get a second look. Um, there are only so many looks you can get. I'm not going to go into that because that's a lot of detail, but essentially promoting as an officer can be kind of challenging and subjective. You want to make sure you're not getting into any trouble. You're not getting paperwork. You're doing your job. Um, you're putting yourself in for certain things. You do want to be certain strategic to some point. I always believe you bloom where you planted, you shine where you shine, and you shouldn't have any issues. But essentially for me, I have not had any issues yet on promoting. Stratifications and things, I'm not in those meetings, but when I was an exec and I got to observe, essentially it's like the creme of the crop. And so that's why you don't want to make your bosses mad, but you also don't want to be like, a yes man. You want to kind of like give and take, like let me handle my stuff, but I'm not going to be like brown nosing. You know what I mean? So um, that's the biggest difference from the officer side to the enlisted side. Um, the enlisted side is kind of like they test at first until they hit the senior, senior NCO tier. That's when they have a board similar to ours. Both enlisted and officers, it is subjective. It is political because it's a political climate and there's no way around it. Um, the only thing that I can say for officers, um, for MSCs, we promote quick, we promote pretty fast, so that's what I enjoy about our core. But it is hard to make certain ranks, and sometimes when you're competing against like the best of the best and you're friends with that person, it is a dog eat dog world. But I try to remember what God has for me is for me. I try not to be too political about it, I'm gonna be honest. And honestly, I just love, it's kind of like fun putting your record together, but it's also a pain in the butt. So once I go through my record um, submission um, later in the year and all that process irons itself, irons itself out, I can talk more in depth, but this is kind of the first video introduction onto how to promote. Essentially, it's all by your date about your performance and then just submitting your documents. So there's nothing much you can really do. PE failures, or sorry, PT failures, 
Physical fitness failures, paperwork are things that will hinder your promotion. You guys, my battery died, so I don't even remember what I was saying, but essentially, <laughs> essentially all you need to remember is like PT failures and anything negative can affect your record and your promotion. You only get certain, so many looks for certain ranks. And for example, you, I believe only get two looks for major. So if you don't make it your first look and you don't make, make it your second look then after that they will issue separation orders so that's just to keep in mind and if you don't complete um, required pme like squadron officer school or acsc and other things for higher ranks then again they will issue um you separation orders so hopefully this promotion introductory promotion video kind of makes sense um if you can remember three things do your pme don't have anything derogatory on your record, and then try your best to get strats and awards. Those three things um, will help you promote on time and when the time is right. Um, if you have any more comments or questions on what future military videos you want, you would like to see, please comment down below. I am thinking about doing updated series on a lot of my older videos because they are updated and now that i've been in for seven years i believe i have some things have changed if you'd like to see that again thumbs up comment below any sharing liking engagement helps my channel and helps me out a lot so i'd really appreciate it if you guys could do that but thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye